Hi, this is Roy Samuelson of the ADNA Presents. This next episode from Lane Kelly. Oh, we go over so many great points, and it's probably one of the shortest audio description interviews that we've done because we cover so much territory. She has echoed so many things that have been mentioned in this podcast and in so many other ways in such an eloquent and clear way. And uh, one of my favorite parts is that uh, another friend of mine had introduced me to Lane's audio description work prior to even knowing that it was her that had done it. So yet another example of uh, the importance of credits. Enjoy. Welcome to the ADNA Presents. This is Roy Samuelson. Today we have Lane Kelly. She is a voiceover artist and she does all kinds of stuff. It's, how'd you say about the umbrella? I love that. VO is the umbrella and there's a bunch of things underneath. There we go. That's so clean. I hope that's on your website. <laughs> 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 Thanks for joining us, Lane. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. What do you love about audio description? Man, audio description, one, I love it because it's serving a community. I'm always about paying it forward and not to be cheesy, but one of my mottos is together we rise. So, you know, serving a community who would otherwise not be able to enjoy all the content that I consume <laughs> guiltily is much. So being able to serve that community and then because I do so many different genres of it, the tone, I can play with it so much. So now whether it's a documentary, it's a sitcom feature. It's great to hear about the different genres and the tones that you play with. Could we expand a little bit about what that means as far as what you're doing? in the audio description. And we're not looking for like spoiler secret alerts, like we're not trying to steal your secrets. When I first started, I was finding that I would get cast for a lot of documentaries because my voice, I can level it out a bit. It sounds confident, credible, but also conversational. So I have that. But then I would do a sitcom, which needs to be a little bit lighter. And, you know, you can put a little laugh in your voice and play along with the characters. I'm doing a lot more features now, so I find that I have to be very careful <laughs> because I get so engrossed if I haven't seen it before that my voice shifts a little too dramatically depending on what's happening on the scene. So you scale it back. But it's really fun to be able to play and I'm not stuck in just one genre of the art. I love it. When you're talking about that engrossing experience, we always talk about that high wire act that we performers in audio description give with that nuance. Mm -hmm. And I hear you saying scale back. I think it might be useful for us to share with our audience, especially about that scaling back, that that doesn't mean that you're doing less. It's not like you're phoning it in. It may be scaled back, but it's not that you're not giving your all. Is that a fair thing to say? Definitely it is fair because, I mean, voiceover at its core is an accompaniment to what's being seen on screen or what's being heard. So I don't want to overshadow the visual. I don't want to overpower the video. I want it to be a compliment. I, mean, I don't want it to be distracting from what someone can or cannot see, depending on who's actually watching the content. And within the genre, do you stay that same thing the whole way through? Like, for example, obviously, if you're engrossed in a feature film, there's a lot of different scenes that are happening. Do you keep it nonstop action intensity or is it I think you've already answered the question that when you play with the, the experience that it's not that you're that same thing throughout. You actually maybe different things happen within the scene. Yeah, you have to flex, right? Because if it's an action scene, you want to be a little bit more high energy, have some more tension in your voice, maybe bring it down with a little bit more gravitas. But if it's a love scene, you're not going to sound like that because you'll sound like a weirdo <laughs> or creeper. <laughs> so, yeah, you do kind of flex like you would in any conversation or whatever is going on in life. You'd flex depending on what's happening in front of you. What's some of the challenges that you've had? Maybe a specific challenge that you'd be comfortable sharing that you're really proud of how you overcame it within audio description. One of the biggest challenges I had coming into AD was the very small time codes. You know, there's a long sentence. And you have three seconds. So, you know, being able to keep things shorter, taking shorter breaths, not opening your mouth as much. You know, there's different techniques that you can use to kind of get the verbiage in there. And then sometimes I have the relationship with my clients where I can maybe edit it a little bit to make it fit as long as we're capturing the essence of what the writer was trying to say. And if they don't like it, they'll come back. But generally, it's okay. <laughs> How about where you see audio description headed? And we're recording this in July of 2023. So there's a lot of conversations that are happening. If things were going the way that you would love to have them go, what would that be like for you for audio description? Okay, how do I keep this short and concise? I think as a fully sighted person, I started turning AD on when I had never used it before. And I found that I actually 
continue to leave it on, just not even in a work capacity, because I enjoy actually having that extra context to what's going on. And sometimes the writer talks about things that I didn't even pick up in my full sightedness. So kind of go forward and I try to market AD. I kind of, I let everyone know the value in what AD is. And when I first started on this genre, people were defining AD as the wild, wild west. The regulations aren't there as much, you know, rates and things like that aren't as streamlined as you would see with other genres of the business. So I want to see it kind of come forward a little bit more in the industry and be highlighted to show up on IMDb. Eventually, Lord, let us get some residuals for it. (laughs) I may be hoping for too much with that one, but that would be fantastic. I'm just bringing more awareness to it as a whole. Anything else you'd like to share with our audience? I guess just a moment of gratitude. Getting into AD, I just kind of jumped in, heard about it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is cool, learning a new skill set, another thing under my umbrella, right? And then after reaching out to a couple of different now current clients, it's been fantastic. And it's not lost on me that I got into it in a season where representation really matters and people are showing up. And so as an African-American artist, I was like, okay, this is my time to do it. So super grateful for the folks that have brought me onto their teams and have allowed me to showcase what I do as an African-American and as a female voice. You've mentioned the umbrella a few times. I love this question. Do you find that other aspects of voiceover has informed how you do audio description and vice versa? Absolutely. I definitely feel like AD and the other genres that I do They've influenced each other because I can take things that I've learned in AD and pull it into my other genres because, again, it's all under the same umbrella. So you can employ the different skills as needed, and it makes you a better commercial or e-learning or corporate narrator or some of the things I learned from those genres, lending it to. There's like a symbiotic relationship, I think, amongst them all. Lane, how can we follow you and find out what's going on in your career? For Instagram, stay with me, it's at Lane, L-A-I-N-E, Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, Sims, S-I-M-S. That's the same handle for Facebook. And my website is just my name, LaneKelly.com. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So fun.